Uh, one question I was going to ask you is if um, people are not there to collect the award, what happens then? Some people will be accepting via Skype that can't be there. Okay. So, yeah. Well, because I was going to mention or suggest that if people are not there to collect the award, you just go ahead and give it to me. So. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Encounters USA with author Matthew Hines. If you're looking for alien incidents, Bigfoot brouhaha's, or dogman dealings, we have the podcast interviews, field research, and field interviews you're gonna love. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and check us out on Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Encounters USA. We've got an amazing podcast and YouTube video for you. We are going to be talking about the UFO Paranormal Summit, and we have Mary Kennedy from the UFO I team. She is standing by, and we are going to be basically grilling her today because I do not really have that much background on the on the Paranormal Summit that's being held at Ocean Shores. And first of all, I want to give you my alibi. Uh, I was over in the Middle East for a long time, so I didn't know any of this stuff was going on. And I just started Encounters USA about a year ago, or almost a year ago. It will be a year at the end of April. And so I did not know. So the, the, the event would have happened last year before um, Encounters USA got started. So there's my alibi. I am really going into this completely dark. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what are you going into so dark? And the answer to that is, um, I got a call the other day. Uh, it's It was about three days ago. I had just come home from the um, Olympic Peninsula, where I was uh, doing a video on Bigfoot sightings and missing people. And um, I get a call from Michael Hall at the at the UFO I team. And he says, Matt, I have a great idea for you. Or I said, not a great idea. He says, guess what? He says, the Academy of Paranormal, uh, the Academy of Paranormal. And, and I think Mary's going to have to help me out with this in a second. But um, we have this idea. We're going to have all that really hit me was the idea Academy. So when he gets done with his first uh, basic pitch, I said, so are we going to be giving classes at this, Michael? And he said, well, yeah, I, I suppose we could. But through the whole conversation, I really had no idea what Michael Hall was talking about when he's talking about the summit. And so tonight we have Mary Kennedy of the UFO I team and Mary, I'm going to bring you out right now and let people um, be introduced to you. So Mary, welcome to Encounters USA. Thank you, Matt. So Mary, we have, um, obviously you have your work cut out for you because you're going to be educating me tonight about not only the UFO paranormal summit, but you're also going to be educating me about um, this uh, Paranormal Academy Awards that uh, Michael is is uh, getting organized. And so that's going to be really fascinating. It's going to be educational. And I know that I've seen a lot of things on the on the Facebook page that people are kind of wondering, well, what's going on here and what kind of uh, speakers are going to be there and who's going to be there. So as well, I have my own questions. So Mary, um, we invited Johnny Manson, who is the organizer, the organizer of the event. And we, ha we so far are, are waiting for him to join the meeting, but so far um, he hasn't rung in yet. But at some point, we hope that he's going to be on. But until then, Mary, you're going to be our uh, person fielding the questions. But first of all, let's get to know a little bit about uh, Mary Kennedy. Now, Mary Kennedy, I guess the first question I would have and a lot of people would have is, 
You're involved with the UFO I team, correct? That's right. And how many years have you been involved with the UFO I team? It has been two or three years. I I'm not very good with time, but um, at at least two years, going on three years, I think. Okay, and what do you find so fascinating about the uh, UFO I team uh, that you have stayed so long in, in within the organization? Well, I really enjoy the fact that uh, we go out into the field to do research. We go on um, overnight trips and see what we can encounter. And we have encountered some really interesting things. We do sky watches up in uh, a lot of them up in the uh, Mount Baker area and other places. We have some real technical people on the team. And of course we have Michael who is the founder and, um, he has tentacles everywhere in the paranormal uh, field and knows a lot of people. And so there's, there's always new and interesting information, plus the data that we gather ourselves. And it's also just a really nice, fun group of people to be with. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, we were talking earlier before we started in, I didn't really give you my background. I interviewed Michael at the East City Ranch last summer, and that's how I ran into him and Lee and um, Ander. And so we did the we did the East City Ranch, and then we did uh, Lake Kakalaka, and then I ended up up at Baker Lake as well. Which um, we I think Nikki came by, but I don't. You didn't make it up there, I assume. You no actually. Yeah, last summer was difficult for me because I had a lot of things going on. And the summer prior, I was working weekends. It's It's been hard for me to make um, all of the trips. But Yeah. Yeah, well, I can certainly understand that. But um, I'm just trying to impress you and the listening audience with my familiarity with the um, <laughs> I-team. And, um, and I am familiar enough. I mean, yeah, you're not kidding about the highly technical part and you just have to look at the videos I've made of Baker and Lake Takalaka. I never can say that right. Um, of all of the, the gear that these guys have to set up. So, and also, you know, Dave Mason, the, the legend, um, you know, is just a great compliment to those guys. So anyway, um, you started um, with the I team, and what what do, do people have particular roles on the I team? Like on the Fantastic Four, one guy shoots flames, and um, <laughs> do you guys have particular skills and superpowers? Uh, well, let's see. I would say Michael is the uh, skilled PR guy. He's mm-hmm. uh, the glue that holds it together, and then you got. Lee Strauss, who does amazing videos, uh, CE5 encounters. And I mean, that guy will climb to the top of mountains with you know, nothing but a tent on his back and, and get some incredible footage and have incredible experiences. And along with Andrew, who is um, and between the two of them, they got some kind of a, I, I don't know what you would call it, but um they're One is ho- able to spot gung-ho. the things, and then the other is able to uh, to film it, and it's it's kind of amazing. But I, I, you know, you'd have to interview them to have them really go into the details of that. But then, um, let's see, I'm the graphic designer for the for the team, and I also do regressive hypnotherapy for people that want to kind of explore if they've had missing time or things like that. And we have Nikki, who is an intuitive. She's kind of, um, I guess, a, a psychic. I don't know if she prefers psychic or intuitive. And, of course, Dave Mason, who I I don't even know what to call him. He's I call him an inventor because he comes up with these amazing devices. Plus, he has incredible gear for sky watching and he's caught a lot of of interesting things himself and so i don't know that they're necessarily roles but those seem to be the the niches we fall into 
And yeah. Yeah. I noticed that you guys just compliment each other so well. And I just will have to say that I regret not having seen you out on one of these expeditions to, to lighten things up. So, uh, so maybe, maybe some other time or are you, so, all right, well, let's, let's ask you one more thing before we get into our topic of the summit. And that is, what is your paranormal background? Have you had experiences yourself and were they of the UFO kind or did you have any others? Uh, yes. And yes, I've been interested in the field since really since I could remember. Um, I've had a lot of really intriguing dreams around UFOs and UFO encounters. And uh, one which was, I woke up and thought, well, that was the strangest dream I ever had. And, and later came to realize it wasn't a dream. I've also encountered spirits. I had a spirit in my closet <laughs> in Portland, which was, was interesting. And I, I had that confirmed by a friend of mine who was, was an intuitive. And that spirit would communicate with me using a, a motion sensor nightlight that was in the room. And the, the door would be closed. I could see the light come on from under the door in response to questions that I asked her. So that, that's uh, kind of my spirit, uh, other paranormal. I guess that would fall under other paranormal is, mm-hmm. is the spirit that was in my house. And then um, I, was, I do the, the one dream I said that I came to realize was not a dream. That also happened in Portland in the same house. And that was where I was taken from my, my bed at about three in the morning by three small beings. Okay, so that um, that is really similar to Lee Strauss's abduction experience, isn't it? Also, and and thousands of others. Yes. Ha- have you yes. heard Have you heard Lee's abduction experience? Um, I heard his, but it was like it's been like two years, so I okay, don't remember okay. the details. Okay. So, how much of the um, experience do you remember? I just remember up to the point where I reached the top of the stairs and um, just uh, I remember when they, they, they got me out of bed and I was, I was protesting the whole time. It's like, what are you kids doing here? You can't be here. It's three in the morning. Why are you here? But still they were able to just, you know, gently get me up and lead me to the top of the landing where I, you know, from the top of the landing, I could see the front door, which was open, and there was um, another being there that I I took to be my neighbor lady at the time, and uh, I was talking to her and saying, "These kids can't be here." It was I was like in a fog, and I kept saying the same thing: "These kids can't be here. Why are these kids here?" <laughs> and um, she told me that two of them could leave, but one of them had to stay, and at that point. I have no further memory. Wow. No. No. So, and how, how old were you when this happened? Oh, this was probably five years ago. Really? It, was, wow. it wasn't that long ago. Five so, or six years ago. Okay. And the closet, same time frame? Yes. Yeah, same time frame. Wow. And nothing before that? Um, just the very strange dreams about, being taken under under the uh, ocean and shown babies that were being grown in glass jars. No. And yeah. And I, I had another dream about um, being told that I had a son and he was living in Northern California and I never met him. And then I, I was relating that to an um, experiencer group and they go, well, you know, there's, Supposedly, there is a colony or a, a ranch of hybrids down in Northern California. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. That's quite a coincidence. <laughs> but wow. yeah, so and I, I have, have had a lot of dreams of seeing crafts of different shapes and sizes. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to throw this at you because I, I listen to a lot of things. But uh, and Angela Smith, the remote viewer, do you know her? 
Angela Smith. Doctor, no. doctor. Uh, she's a remote viewer, and she ha- she wrote a book called um, "She Remote Viewed the Aliens of the Cosmos," something like that. And that's that's the book that she wrote. But um, I heard her talking about it, and she said there is in a town in Northern California, there's a group of tall whites that live there. And, oh, okay. And I I don't know if that has anything to do with what you're talking about. But when I heard it, of course, I just scoffed. But um, wow, who knows? Maybe you've maybe you're onto something there. I I don't know. It may may just be a wild coincidence, but it's certainly something that makes you go. Hmm. So, um, do you think that there was any connection between the 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 spirit and the abduction experience? I don't. It didn't feel like it, there was, and okay. and honestly, I don't know. Don't know why the spirit was there. It was a new house, mm-hmm. um, but I guess. She could have been attached to, I, I shop at like thrift stores and Goodwill a lot. So she could have been attached to something I brought in. Hmm. I, I don't know. But it, it was really interesting because I, I worked out a system with her where it was like, you know, turn the light on twice for yes or turn the light on once for no. And, and then I would ask her questions and the door would be closed. So there was no, uh, no chance of anything in that room triggering the light mm-hmm. and then uh, then she would respond with answers by turning the light on once or twice. And at first it kind of freaked me out, but there was no animosity about it. You know, there was, a, there was never a bad feeling. It was just like, is this really happening? And should I be worried? And, and then eventually I, I got to the point where, when she would be absent for long periods of time, I would actually miss her. <laughs> so, hmm. And uh, yeah, that was, that was very interesting. I would have been out of there so fast. You, <laughs> you wouldn't have even seen my flash. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's incredible. Um, so did it, what did it just eventually end or did you leave? I moved. Oh, you I moved. moved okay. Yeah. Yeah, I moved back up to Washington, and so okay. she didn't come with me. I told her she could if she wanted to, but she didn't come with me. <laughs> wow. All right. Wow. Maybe she's going to end up out at Ocean Shores. Who? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> who knows? So speaking of Ocean Shores, Mary, let's um, get on to uh, the the topic at hand, and that is uh, this, um, uh, you know, I, I've heard, okay, so I've got Michael's, um, it is the Academy Awards. I want to say this correctly because so far I've got UFO Paranormal Summit is the, I think that that is, that's something that has been going on for a long time, correct? Yes, yes. And that's the the thing that Johnny Manson puts on uh, every year. So it is called UFO Paranormal Summit. And that's just the overall three day event name. Okay. And then, so can you, in light of the fact that Johnny's not here to tell us about it, have you, you've been there, I assume? Yes, I have. I think I've seen pictures. I was, I think I was looking at pictures and you were there. Um, So can you tell us, um, first of all, um, how many, um, how many speakers do you think are going to be there? I, you know, I haven't really studied the lineup and I, I don't know how many are going to be there, but I do know some of the heavy hitters that are going to be there. And that includes Nick Pope and David Pilates and, um, boy, I'm not, I'm not good at remembering names, but okay. there's some really heavy hitters in the field of ufology and the paranormal that are going to be there this year. And, and typically they, they, um, they just, it's in a big, like, I guess a conference room at the, at the um, hotel there, the casino, you know, large room with a stage and each speaker gets, you know, X amount of minutes to get up on stage and um, 
present something that's something they're working on or talking about a book they have or talking about experiences they've had. It's always, you know, something different. I think Peter Davenport, that's another name of somebody that's going to be there this year. And of course, UFO I team and uh, Daryl Sims, the alien hunter. And he had the TV show for, I don't, I don't know if he still does, but he had the TV show for a long time, Mm -hmm. the alien hunter. So there's there's some big names in the UFO field and the paranormal that are going to be presenting. And it's always really fascinating. And, you know, it's it's a little touching, too, because people get up and share stories from, the, you know, from their heart. And there are things that they might not even share with their families, but they, you know, they feel in, you know, in a safe environment because everybody's there to learn and to know and to connect on that level. And so sometimes the stories are very touching and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I was like, I don't know what to say, proud of the people that get up there and, and share their stories, even though it might not be real comfortable for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a real honest and, um, I, and I don't know, it's just, it's, there's a camaraderie there too. It's, it's neat. <laughs> okay. So Mary, now again, I apologize. I, I have not been there. I will be there. Um, I have been, Mike asked me and I'm, I'm going to finish up the story right now. Um, Michael asked me after I still, I mean, even when I hung up the phone, I had no idea what he was talking about, but <laughs> by the time we ended our conversation, he had asked me and made it clear to me that um, he wanted me to be like a roving reporter or not like a roving reporter, the roving reporter uh, to go around and interview these people that you're talking about. So I was going, wow, that is just amazing. All these people are going to be there. And Mm -hmm. so I, I, and, and, you know, even before Michael said any of that, I, I really like Michael. Um, I like Lee and, you know, we have a, a nice little camaraderie. And um, I, was, I mean, before he said anything, I just said, where, what, what do you need? When do you need it? And um, so then he started talking about that we're not really having some kind of scholastic academy. Um, we're, we're doing like a, a UFO summit. So, so that's how I got into this. And so um, I'm asking you basically what, what my job is going to be. And um, the, uh, the fact that I'll be able to talk to David Politis and Nick Pope and all these people, well, that's right up our alley. That's right up my alley because yes. I get to talk to them about all of my ideas and my uh, experiences just like everybody else. So, Mary, when you're talking about um, these guys giving, it sounds like testimonials, is there times where people are just allowed to come up and talk like an open mic kind of thing? Most of the speakers open up a part of their presentation to the audience questions. Hmm. And so I I would say that would be the closest thing. Okay. Um, Also, they, they have around the edges, the perimeters of the room, they, the speakers have a table. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you uh, have questions that don't get addressed or you don't get a chance to ask, you can always go up to their table later and uh, talk to them there. So you know, they're around all the time and you, you have plenty of opportunities to, you know, ask them questions or talk to them or share an experience with them. Mm-hmm. So, like Politis and Pope, do they have tables there and all that, or, or do they just fly them in to the helipad on the roof and then they <laughs> do their presentation and take off again? Is- well, unfortunately, that would be a question for Johnny, but I, I know for a fact that two years ago, Politis was there because, and he had a table because my sister went to try and buy one of his books and he had already sold out. But wow. so I know he had a table. So I, you know, I'm. I'm thinking anybody that wants to have one or that has merchandise to sell like books or CDs can have a table. And um, Daryl Sims at one, I went to, I think that was Bigfoot one though. I know he had a table. 
So I, I would say that the majority of the speakers will also have a table set up with information that you can pick up or go talk to them. Okay. Well, you gave me a great idea, Mary, because if Politis sells out all his books, I'm going to take all of my books down and I'm going to put them on his table. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I don't want to do that because I guess I wouldn't get the money for it. So I'll have to think, I have to think about that one some more. All right. Well, maybe I won't do that. All right. So um, let's get down to um, what is your, you're going to be down there with the I team. Um, I, I want to say, make a joke, but I, I won't. Um, what, it, what are you going to be um, doing down there, Mary, with the I team? I pretty much am just going to be support staff. Staff. I will be at the table answering questions. Um, you know, any information we have, I can hand out or if people want to, um, I think we will have some items for sale there. So I'll be doing mostly that support. And um, Friday night, of course, I'll be helping Michael. Is uh, He says, I need a personal assistant to follow me around with a clipboard. So <laughs> I'll be doing that during the award ceremony. Uh, see, he picks the prettiest one. So are you... <laughs> Are you going to be um, the designated driver also? The designated driver. Do they have that anymore? I, you know, I've been out of the loop for so long. Well, I'm, I'm qualified. I used to be a Lyft driver. <laughs> okay. uh, what do you mean designated driver? Well, like when people drink too much and then somebody oh. has to drive them home, has to drive them home. Well, I can. Uh, go ahead. We'll be, we'll, there'll be a shuttle between the casino oh, and the hotel okay. where we're you've, staying. So you've already got that figured out. You've already got that planned out, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, that's pretty, pretty clever. Okay. So um, there we go. We're at the, um, we're at the summit. So what kind of uh, lodgings, what kinds of accommodations are available for somebody that wants to come out to ocean shores? And again, this is a question that Johnny Manson should be answering, but what's yeah. available in Ocean Shores and what are the prices of um, the pass to get into the thing? Uh, what can we expect to spend for a weekend there? Boy, I would have to to Google the price. Um, you know, I'd have to look that up. I don't, I don't think it's too much. I, for some reason, I'm thinking it was like $35, but don't quote me because well, I looked at that a while ago. pass to get in. Yeah. Yeah, because I think if you said that was for the hotel room, I think you'd have a stampede. <laughs> yeah, as far as accommodations, of course, the Quasita Casino is is also a hotel, and it, it's, um, from what I understand, it's very nice. And then a short ways up the road, there's um, a lot of smaller hotels, like the Sweetgrass and the, I think it's Comfort Inn. Yeah, and there's a shuttle that goes between those little hotels and the casino. They're not very far apart, maybe a mile apart. Right. So there's there's lodging to be had. Um, well, and I, but, Maria, I should also add because the Lake Quinault Casino is hosting this, and it's very nice that they do that. And I don't get any uh, remuneration or reimbursement or anything in that in any respect, but. Um, they that uh, they have offer packages. I know because I I know that they did for the Sasquatch Summit. And on the Facebook page, it says to just tell them that you are there when you book a room to um, book and tell them that you're staying for the summit or you're there for the summit. And I think they were about hundred and something a night with a with a pass. So that's pretty competitive to anything. Yeah, else. that's that's a good deal. Yeah, I stay at the um, I stay at the Shiloh Inn actually, and I have a, connect, Inn, yes. have a connection there, so I get a a fairly reasonable rate. So anyway, but I probably won't this weekend. I'm sure they're going to be very busy. So speaking of that, um, do you have what when you've been there before? What was the turnout like? Oh, it, it gets a really good turnout. Um, I would say the room was two thirds to three quarters full and you know, it's a big room. It's a really big room. Yes. So I, I would say on yeah, the turn, I don't know in numbers, but it was a full house and you know, people were very engaged okay. and they, they would get up and ask questions for every speaker and they would um, go around the perimeter and 
um, talk to all the speakers at the table. So it was, okay. it was good. Okay. Sounds like this interview is getting pretty rough. So get it rough. rough? Oh, rough, rough, okay. rough. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I, I tried. No, that's no, okay, Mary. All right. So, um, so the UFOI team now, this, this Academy Awards, what is the history of that? Is this something new? This, this is amazing. This is, um, this is how Michael's brain works. He's, he's, he's an idea man. He came up with this idea very recently and pulled it together. Uh, just spur of the moment. Um, it's, it's like this and it's going to be you know, really cool. And next year it's going to be like this and the following year like this. But his his concept is there's there's a lot of different factions in the UFO and paranormal fields. You know, you've got your Bigfoot people, you got your Dogman people, you've got your your ghost people, you've got your UFO people, you got all these people in the paranormal field in their own little branch of research and study and exploration. Ah, uh, wait a and, minute. Not Encounters USA. We cover them all. Except for ghosts. <laughs> I'm scared of ghosts. <laughs> There's got to be a special category for you then. Yeah. But his his idea is let's bring it all together. So, you know, the Bigfoot people can see what's going on in the UFO field. And the UFO people can see what's going on in the uh, ghost field. And, and so he put together a list of nominees that is just phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's huge. And people are adding to it every day. Yeah. And it's... The spirit of the thing is not only to recognize these people and their contribution to the field, but to bring us together as a community, all of us, Mm -hmm. and to also kind of, I I call it normalize Mm -hmm. the experience because, you know, it's like, let's, let's let the people see how long this list is. Let's let, you know, the, everybody see how many people are devoting their life and their education and their resources into studying this stuff and bringing it to the public. And it's, um, I, I think it's a, a really neat idea. And I, I think it's a great idea. He came up with it like in the middle of the night and, and um, he's been pulling it all together. And so Friday night, there will be an award ceremony and it's going to, he's going to do it upright. It's going to be like a red carpet event and, There'll be he'll be presenting awards and he'll have other people in the field presenting awards and some by Skype, some in person. And um, by next year, we're going to have all the um, we'll have all the feedback. We'll have all the kinks worked out and we'll it'll just grow and become more refined. And um, you know, it's, it's a big project that is, is just, it's like a baby being born and we're excited to see it grow. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to even hear all of that. And I have a, I have a couple of things that I would like to input, but first of all, how do people, I mean, people are being nominated, right? Like the Academy Awards. So who's yes. doing the nominating? Anybody that goes to the Facebook page. Okay, and what is that Facebook? Well, I I know what the Facebook page is. I'll just post all that. That will be somewhere on this thing if I'm if I'm not too lazy in the editing process. But uh, yeah, you just have to go to the Facebook page, and the Facebook page is what? Do you know what? Do you have it right offhand? I you know I was looking for it because I wanted to get it right, but it, it's basically the uh, um, the Academy of Paranormal uh, Arts and Sciences. Yes. Paranormal Arts and Sciences. And it's the awards are being called the Cosmos or Cosmo, I'm sorry, Cosmo Awards. Mm. Okay. And so if you if you just look for that Facebook page, and yes, if you have the link, I don't I don't have it up, but if you have the link that you could post, that would be great. Because you can just go if you look at the top um the top posting, it'll have a a document, a link to a document that you can read through or just look at, but in the comments section, you can put down whoever you would like to nominate, who you think deserves to be a um, recipient of the award. And uh, there's going to be a lot of different categories. And I don't know if Michael will have the time 
because like I say, this is, this is just like breaking news. He's just coming up with this and right. working yeah. it all out, but eventually it'll be, it'll be more organized. It'll be categories and um, ways to nominate that are a little more streamlined. We have, he has a, a woman, her name is Kat and I can't remember her last name. She's helping him a lot on this and she's, she's really great. Mm-hmm. She's a new member to the UFOI team. Okay. And, you know, it is a great time to do this because um, even here at Encounters USA, we have uh, the joint project going on with the I-Team. We've got uh, the Dogman, the North American Dogman Project, and uh, Todd Neese's uh, Bigfoot, uh, his American Primate Conservancy, uh, all joining this together this summer to go out and look for Bigfoot, Aliens, and Dogman. And we're just going to basically cordon off an area like a, like a grid square on a map and just set up all of our fancy equipment and see if we can't find something, either Bigfoot, aliens, or dogmen or UFOs, but um, just seal off a place for a while. So it's exactly the right time for this. And the only thing, um, Mary, I, you know, do you? I don't know how involved you are with uh, the with the paranormal world. When you start to get as a podcaster, I've I've noticed this in the short time that I've been doing this that there are politics involved. I mean, even oh, yeah. within the Bigfoot community, there are people that don't accept other people in the Bigfoot yeah. community. I mean, that's just yeah. in the Bigfoot community. So, <laughs> what happens when you get? And I'm not saying that this is not a great idea because it absolutely is. But I also um, want to ask you if you think maybe it's going to be open to some kind of uh, to to something to to some negativity um, when you start to try to you know get people together like this that believe in different things. I think any time you bring a new idea forward and when you bring diverse groups of people together, you're opening yourself up to some negativity, but it's not, it's not what we'll be focusing on. And the people, the people that want to come together in a spirit of cooperation and, um, you know, just kind of curiosity and, and um, intelligence and a, a mood of sharing and, caring those people will be the ones that carry it forward and the people that are negative they don't have to play (laughs) it's just simple as that if they don't if they don't like um the tone of it then they don't have to play that's that's their choice Mm -hmm. yeah it's so funny that uh you know that is something that i'd never uh expected to find but um there are um there are a lot of politics and, and in the Bigfoot community, it seems like there's much more um, than anything else. Um, so here's, here's another thing, Mary, that I, when Michael told me about this and I'm starting to, to look at the awards and stuff is there are, I'm not going to use myself as an example. I'm going to take a, like Sasquatch Chronicles, which kind of inspired me to get started. It's a guy do you, have you ever heard of that Sasquatch Chronicles? It's a podcast um, deal. Well, anyway, he just collects all these encounters of uh, Bigfoot, um, and is real. And he just has people on the show, and and they talk about it, and uh, they talk about their encounters. So they have a place to go and say, "Yeah, I yep. saw this," and and somebody doesn't laugh at them, and and um, and and they feel at home. So people like that. Um, and uh, another one is, um, dog man encounters, um, is Rick another Cundiff. one. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah, guys. Yeah. I follow that. Yeah. Those guys deserve, uh, uh, you know, I, I think th- that's because, you know, when, and I don't want to, I appreciate the work that Nick Pope and, and all these guys have done, but I think that, that, you know, when it's like every time there's a lot of guys out there, there, there that are doing some really um, interesting stuff. And um, so I would really lo- hope that people will uh, try to find the people that are independent, not really doing it for yes. the money, doing it part time, because there's some really great stuff out there. 
So I actually did nominate Vic Kunda for, <laughs> for a Cosmo right. Award. <laughs> See that? Great minds do think alike. So Michael and I had that Dogman UFO Bigfoot thing, and then you and I had the Vic Cundiff Dogman Encounter nomination award. So there you go. So uh, so okay, if people get nominated, what happens to? I mean, is it how many votes they get, and, and then the winner is announced, or or is it all political? No, it it, it won't be political. Um, this the first time around. Um, it's not going to be a very, it's going to be more open and a lot of people are going to get awards because, you know, like I say, we're just, we're just getting this off the ground. And then the, by the, this time next year, we'll have a nomination and voting process in place so that, you know, this, it'll be a, a more um, professional kind of a system, but uh, that's something you probably have to talk more to Michael about because I don't I don't know if he's got the plans in place yet or if he's still working out details. Okay. Well, if I know Michael, he's <laughs> probably got the plans in place. Now I talked to him. Oh no, he left me a voice message uh, this morning, I think, and said that uh, he's just really busy. He's got all kinds of contacts from people and his phone doesn't stop ringing. So I, I think this might be pretty big. So how, so if you're the UFO summit starts on Friday night, but the uh, awards are going to be like piggybacking on top of them or, or the, or there just won't be any of their speakers Friday night. That will just Mm -hmm. be the awards. As I understand it, there are going to be some speakers Friday night and then the awards ceremony and um, and then the regular lineup of speakers on Saturday and the breakout sessions on Sunday. So what time, do you know the schedule? Do you know when events start and any of them? Um, I believe, let's see. You know, again, I'm I'm chronologically challenged. Um, I I kind of like I know when I'm going to show up and and start helping out, but I don't think anything's really going to start until about six o'clock Friday night. Okay. I don't All think right. it's either four or six okay. because you know it's Friday night and a lot of people are working, so they can't get there right. earlier. Only only Nick Pope and Politis in their <laughs> helicopters. So yes. Yeah, well, it's going to be really fun. Um, so you are, um, th- is the I team going to have a table? Yes. Yes, I will be. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you, table, said, you said yes. that. Yeah, because I kept, I kept wanting to say, oh, well, you're going to be babysitting. You're going to be babysitting <laughs> the I team. But um, uh, anyway, I guess it finally came out. So you'll have your own table. And so you'll be there. And um what can people, what does the I-team table have to offer people um, besides your presence? <laughs> people like to come and share their stories with us. And that's mm-hmm. kind of been our motto, you know, tell us your story. So people like a place they can go and say, you know, I had something really unusual happen to me. And uh, also we'll have information about, how to contact us. We'll be have we'll have cards of all our contact information and um, all our social media sites. And I will also, we have an Etsy store where we have some uh, logo branded t-shirts and hats and stuff. And we'll have, we'll have uh, samples of that that people can look at and then decide, Hey, I might want one of those and they can just go to Etsy and order it. And mm-hmm. They'll get shipped to them. Are you, I, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Mary, go ahead. Oh, I believe, and I hope I'm not talking out of turn, that Michael will have a CD for sale that is a a really professional remake of his uh, Ballad of Mel's Hole song, which is just a riot. It's it's great. And um, possibly some of Lee Strauss's incredible photography for sale. I don't know for sure if that's been confirmed, but it's possible. 
Mm-hmm. Wow, great. Um, oh, boy, I was going to ask you something about Michael, and I can't remember what it was. So you guys are going to be at the table. Is Do you know anybody else that has a table? Mm-hmm. Like it does uh, – is um, – who else was who was the other Bigfoot guy that you were talking about? The other Bigfoot guy? Um Oh it it's so it's fine, Mary. There was there was there was a Bigfoot researcher that you were talking about earlier. All right, so I'm just trying to get at in that room it's fairly large. Like are all the tables there's there's going to be all these people. Do you think like Nick Pope will be sitting at a table or I would imagine he would be, okay. as well as they have tables that uh, people just bring in products to sell, like crystals or, you know, bags or T-shirts or uh, mugs that are, you know, all UFO and paranormal themed. There's there's a lot of fun things you can shop for there, too. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, if I, I if you've never been to Ocean Shores, it's really a, it's a fantastic little town, and it is just very remote, and that's kind of what makes this uh, this really makes it kind of a special event because if you're willing to go that far, uh, you know people just want to go and they and they really are interested in having a good time and yeah. and enjoying themselves. So I think that's really what makes. Uh, the the casino out there and and the events that Johnny puts on, I think that's what uh, makes them really special. Is just that if you're going to go out that far, you're going to go out and you're going to have a good time. So, um, yeah. well, and it is right on the ocean. Yeah, that's right. And you can drive your car on the ocean. That's one of my <laughs> my great attractions to it. Um, so uh, yeah, do you spend any time down there just on a personal level? Uh, you know, uh, when we were kids, that used to be a vacation destination. Mm-hmm. You know, there were four of us and my parents didn't have a lot of money. So for a vacation, we would go rent a little cabin down on Ocean Shores. And we did that two or three times. So I got fond memories of Ocean Shores. But as an adult, I really, other than going to the summits, I, I really haven't spent any time there. No, well, I, I we we spend a, like a lot of time time there because it's so easy to go. You're a little bit farther up north, but um, for us, it's pretty easy just to get down there within like two and a half hours, mm. and then you're out of the rat race. So, yeah, and, definitely. And the rats did win. So, <laughs> all right. So now we're at the summit, and um. We're let's just go over this on Friday. There's going to be the awards. Is there, and you don't know if there's anything happening like in the afternoon? The awards start at six, correct? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, awards. I think the whole thing starts at six, and there will be other speakers speaking okay. on Friday night as well. And that's my understanding and could be subject to change, but okay. the awards definitely will be um, sometime between six and eight starting. Okay. Uh, one question I was going to ask you is if um, people are not there to collect the award, what happens then? I am not really sure, but I believe Michael is actually going to mail them okay. to the people. He's just going to put them in a and then um, package and and mail them off to the people. And okay. some people will be accepting via Skype that can't be there. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, because I was going to mention or suggest that if people are not there to collect the award, you just go ahead and give it to me. So <laughs> I don't know, but um, if uh, you know, just spitballing here. But um, yeah, if uh, you know, who knows? So anyway, um, well, talk to Michael. I, he'll set you up. He'll fix you up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure. I don't want an, I don't know if I want an award. I don't know what category you put me in. So I'm just going to leave that one alone. So, but you say, Mary, some people are going to be accepting on Skype. Yes. Okay. So that's going to be hard to get that thing through the screen. I don't know if anybody (laughs) try to think that through, but you know, well, um, okay. I just, um, I just had a technical um, question and, 
anyway, I guess we can talk about it later. Um, so you're going to have uh, on Friday night, you're going to have the awards that will finish about eight. Is there any like activities at night that they have? Is there social After activities? Do, do I'm, they have parties? No, I'm, there's a, there's a bar. And where there's a bar, there's a party. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, you know, there we are trying to um, arrange a sky watch, and I'm not sure if that will be Friday or Saturday night. But we we are trying to put together a sky watch uh, one of the nights, so that will be something that. And we did that two years ago, and it was it was well received, and you know, Lee got to talk about his equipment that he uses and what kind of things he can capture with it. So people, people really enjoy the sky watch. Well, let's just check the weather real quickly. Oh. Cause um, I, when we were down there, uh, Oh, I was down there for the Sasquatch summit. Nope. We got, of course you've got rains and rain and clouds. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I was down there for the Sasquatch summit and um, it was just, perfect it was just perfect at night yep friday and saturday it rained <laughs> so but uh, yeah i saw you could see so much um as far as uh the stars down there over that beach it's just amazing and i get um i get a place that i get a room at the shiloh like with a beach thing so yeah. it's pretty it's pretty sweet you can just sit out there and for hours if you're you know covered and just sit there and watch and look for activity. And I saw um, something weird. I don't know what it was. Just kind of ho- hovered in the sky for like uh, hours. And then later on it was gone. I don't know what happened, huh. but anyway, but yeah, you can see a lot of stuff and I don't know what it was. So anyway, if you guys had all your equipment there, that'd be great. And really what better way to get people um, into the I team um, than to um, show th- show them what you guys do. Are you guys yes. recruiting at all? Uh, I don't know that we're recruiting, but we it's its just sort of an organic process that people will join kind of sporadically and then other people might drop out. It's um, its just something that kind of happens organically. We're not, we're not actively recruiting members, but like I say, we got we got a new member, Kat, and she's she's pretty amazing. That was exciting to get her as a member, and okay. um, so we. Well, she's just not never an actual know cat. She's not an actual cat, is she? <laughs> no. Okay. I don't believe so, but on one of our calls, I did hear cat meowing, so I can't say for oh, sure. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, because you know, people sometimes if they have a club and they say, "Oh yeah, we've got a lot of people," and then they're counting pets and hamsters and stuff. So just want to make sure about that. All right, Mary. Well, this really sounds like a, a really interesting event. I'm a, a little less um, nervous about what I'm getting into. Uh, but you think that it, um, it's going to be uh, well attended? And um, what what do you think? What is your outlook for this? Do you think it's going to be uh, bigger than last year? Well, with Nick Pope being there particularly, I think it'll be a big draw. The only thing that worries me is people might not want to come out because of COVID-19. That's the only the only thing I can see that might uh, dampen attendance. Yeah, yeah, I hope that wouldn't really uh, affect people's decisions. Um, I think it's too cold for COVID-19, actually. Yeah. So. And I think I think most public venues uh, have been really diligent about you know, disinfecting. It's probably safer than being at home. <laughs> yeah, is that what they call it now? I thought it was the coronavirus. It, I bet the, cor- I bet, oh, go ahead. It is both. It's coronavirus, but coronavirus uh, covers all flu viruses pretty much. Okay. So COVID nineteen is the specific flu virus that is just, uh, and it's a new one that we haven't dealt with before. Okay. Well, I don't even want to get into that, but um, <laughs> I was just thinking, wow, just think of that Corona company that made the beer and what, what did this do to their business? So, and the sales dropped. I just heard that today. Their sales have dropped. Yeah. And I, I'd be suing. <laughs> Who, who's the virus namer around here? I'll sue them. So, well, all right. Well, that's a nice, interesting tangent. So, at the summit, we're going to have 
speakers that deal in aliens and UFOs. Yes. Yes. We're going to have people who deal in Bigfoot. Yes. And let me just point out that David Politis does not deal in Bigfoot, and I'm sure he'll want everybody to understand. Don't ask me anything about Bigfoot. Um, anything about Dogman? I have never seen somebody come to a conference and talk about Dogman. I would love to see that. Well, you you have to talk to Ewan Stewart. I will give you his contact information. He is the Washington chapter North American Dogman Project representative. And there is oh, wow. nobody who would let more be more happy to give a presentation than y'all. That would be amazing. He's got a crazy Scottish name. It's 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 hard to pronounce, but once you get used to it, it's kind of addicting. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I'll give you his information. Um if you're looking for somebody to do a dogman uh speech, then he'd probably be your guy. Um, so we got the dog man, and then you said we're going to have some people, some ghost people. I believe so. Yes, the uh, the um, I'm I'm not positive about that, but that's you know certainly part of the spirit of the thing is the yeah. paranormal. It was that fun. Was that, <laughs> was that was that intended? Oh, are you trying yes. to pass that? Yes, out? let's just say it is. Okay. <laughs> Boy, I'll just take credit for that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna disappear here, boy. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, um, so oh, does that cover the extent of the paranormal? What else? What else would we have there? I, you know, I don't, I don't know for sure because I don't have a lineup of the speakers in front of me. But ah. I would say just be open to it, including anything in the field of the paranormal. Um, okay. I think there's a, a heavy emphasis on UFOs mm-hmm. and Bigfoot and then um, maybe a little lesser emphasis on the other aspects of the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I cannot wait. It's really going to be fun. And, uh, you know, I know it's uh, – see, I've been to the Sasquatch Summit, and um, that was my introduction into these major events. I've been to a smaller one like out at Marble Mount, but um, yeah, they're really, really a lot of fun. And yes. um, I really, I, I cannot thank Michael enough for selecting me to go around and interview people. Cause that is, I, I have from doing this podcast, I have 10 million questions. I thought that I would start <laughs> doing it and get answers and it's just 10,000 more questions. So <laughs> So it makes I, it feel so fun. Yeah, well, I'm really excited. And I know we're going to get a lot of really good video. So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's he's very excited to have you working with them, too. Yeah, well, yep. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah, and it's also a really nice that Michael would even ask me. I think that's great. So, anyway, well, yeah, let's, um, let's uh, tie this off. And do you have any advice for people that are going to come down and, and attend? Um, not specifically, just keep an open mind and have a good time. Okay. You know what, Mary, we didn't mention, I, um, on Sunday, there is a, there are workshops. So Mm -hmm. we're going to have events all day Saturday, and then we're going to have workshops on Sunday. Yes. Yes. And when I say we, I mean you, not, not (laughs) me. So are, are you doing a workshop on Sunday? Um, the UFO team is doing a workshop on Sunday okay. and typically the workshops are, they're just like, um, a smaller, a more intimate gathering where people can really engage and ask questions. And, um, and you, we have a chance to go into more depth and detail or, you know, bring up presentations that we may not have had time to, to go into during the, the regular summit. And there's, I don't remember how many, I think there's three separate breakout sessions and I don't know who the other two are. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know who the other two are, but yeah, that's, that's, and it's an optional thing. You know, you can, you can just pay for the Friday, Saturday, or you can pay extra and go to the workshops on Sunday. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, Mary, uh, when we started this, we were both going, you know, Johnny's not here and <laughs> are we going to be able to do, you know, do anything? But uh, yeah, you've really, I mean, you've 
for, I mean, I think you probably know as much as Michael does, except that he might know more specifics about who's going to be there, but you've really got a lot of information. So now at least we know what's going on. So I, I have to say that I guess you've made us all proud, Mary. So, <laughs> oh, I see. That was your pun. <laughs> you, you knew that was coming. You, you knew it was coming. So, you went up to me. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, it, it, we'll see. It's, it's, I just met you, so it could go back and forth. Who knows what will happen this weekend? You we'll have a good time. Out, That's what will yeah, happen. You might come out ahead. Probably will. So, all right, Mary, we'll, or I'll say Mary Kennedy of the UFO I team. Thanks for joining us on Encounters USA. And it's been a pleasure talking to you. Do you, um, you're going to be at the UFO, or you're up to the UFO I team. You're going to be at the um, event on Friday night. Yes. So people can come and just get you, meet you right at the table. If they like. Uh, Friday night, I, I don't know if I'll be at the table Friday night. I will probably be um, kind of shadowing Michael and helping out however I can. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Well, that is fantastic. And um, is, I guess I should ask this. If people come there and they have a question about something, I was going to ask Johnny if he's the guy that they contact or. or yes. Yeah. Just. just he's to, the man to talk to. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. Well, Mary, I think that we've got enough here for this interview, and it's just been such a pleasure uh, finally meeting you and talking to you. And I'm well, looking you. forward to working with you uh, this weekend and in the future with the UFOI team. So Great. Thank you. Well, thank you. And for everybody who's been listening to this podcast and everybody who's thinking of attending the 2020 Paranormal Summit, in Ocean Shores. Remember what we always say, always watch your back. Thanks for joining us on Encounters USA. Remember, if you have comments, please leave them in the comment section on YouTube and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell while you're at it. Don't forget, if you'd like to be a guest on Encounters USA, just send us an email at EncountersUSA.com numeral one at gmail.com and just put podcast guest in the subject line now please remember that all of the guests opinions on encounters usa are their own and they do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the podcast host nor the podcast sponsors so thank you and don't forget when you're out in the woods Looking for aliens, Bigfoot, or Dogman, always watch your back.